for you how to do Botox injections for chronic migraine. And we're going to start off by injecting the forehead and the muscles that we're going to be injecting are the procerus muscles and the corrugator muscles as well as the frontalis muscles. And we're going to do a total of seven injections across the forehead. The dilution of Botox that we're using is 2 cc's per 100 units and what that means is that in each 0.1 of a cc there are 5 units. This is a 1 cc syringe and we use a 30 gauge half inch needle to do the injections. Now for the corrugator injections we want to ask the patient to frown, furrow your brow and you'll see that these muscles are activated and you can see the muscle bulk very nicely outlined. It attaches to the medial third of the eyebrow and then travels from here towards the frontonasal bone. So I can easily grip that muscle between my thumb and index finger and this finger is just resting on the orbital ridge. And the approach with the needle to make sure I'm in the corrugator is to insert the needle at a 90 degree angle straight into that muscle belly. I can then secure the needle as I deliver the 5 unit dose. Now this is going to be repeated on the opposite side, so furrow the brow, activate the muscle, gripping the muscle between thumb and index finger, insert the needle, not too deeply, not down to the periosteum, just through the skin and into the uh, muscle. Now for our procerus injection, this is done directly between the two corrugator sites in the midline. So furrow the brow again. The procerus muscle is triangular with the apex ending on the bridge of the nose. And we inject this also at a 90 degree angle to the face, not to the periosteum, and a five unit dose. Now for the frontalis injections, we don't want to inject too low because this can produce a depressed brow and in, in fact we want to try and elevate the brow so we're going to inject in the upper third of the forehead the lower two thirds is where the frontalis muscle is attaching to the skin up at the top end here the frontalis muscle attaches to a fascia, the upper neurotic fascia and we're going to inject it right up in the upper third the first injection is done in a vertical line with the corrugator injection and these injections are done at a 45 degree angle with 5 units being delivered. The second injection is a good finger breadth apart on a horizontal line and open your eyes. This second injection lines up with the limbus of the cornea, the outer edge of the cornea. If we draw a line up this is where this injection will be done and these are on the same horizontal line so vertically aligned with the corrugator injection and then vertically aligned with the limbus of the cornea so here's the cornea we're going to come up and make our final frontalis injection. And these are all done at 45 degree angles, not too deep, not down to the periosteum. Always have a dry swab available to take care of any bleeding. The little bumps that you see here will dissipate in about a half an hour. The patient shouldn't rub or massage this area uh, because there is a risk of moving this medication and depositing it too low. If this travels into the lower portion here, we're going to get some drooping of the brow with that eyelid coming down, and that's uh, called atosis. By keeping it high up at this area, we're able to protect this uh, brow elevation function. We're now going to do the temporalis injections. And the temporalis injections are done on the side of the head, and we look at the tragus of the ear. And if we draw a vertical line down through this tragus, this allows us to line up our injections. We measure two finger breadths up from the tragus on that tragal line. And we're going to be injecting at a 45 degree angle and a 
good finger breadth apart, also on that tragal line, for our second injection. We're going to be doing a total of four injections here. These are our first two. We then come a good finger breadth forward of the tragal line, and in between the two injections we've just done, there's our third one. And then we're going to go posteriorly, a good finger breadth behind the tragal line. And this lines up usually with the mid portion of the ear, 45 degree angle. These two injections are at the same horizontal level. So our injection points were two along the tragal line, one anteriorly in between the first two, one posteriorly in line with the top one, and that lines up with the midpoint of the helix of the ear. I'm going to repeat that on the opposite side. And as you'll notice, all of the injections involve 0.1 of a cc. So each of the injection sites is a 5-unit dose. And the 5-unit dose is going to be delivered to a total of 31 sites. So that the total dose we will be injecting is 155 units. So I'm following the identical pattern to what we did on the other side. The superficial temporal vein and artery uh, run anteriorly and often there is some venous uh, bleeding. It's very rare to get any arterial bleeding. We come back a good finger breadth in line with the helix of the ear, 45 degree angle and complete the temporalis injections. So these eight injections make up the temporalis injection sites. We're now going to move to the back of the head and we're going to start injecting for the occipitalis. Now for the occipitalis we use bony landmarks. So if we look at the patient we have the C7 spinous process. And we can follow that up into the next prominent bony nubbin at the posterior aspect of the skull and this feels very similar to the bulge of the C7 spinous process. It's vertically aligned in midline and this is termed the inion. From the inion we're going to look behind the ear to the mastoid and you palpate for the tip of the mastoid. So mastoid tip and inion. So we use those two bony landmarks we draw a line between the inion and the mastoid tip in the midline here. On the knuckle ridge, the needle is angled in an upward direction, 45 degree angle. This is the first occipitalis injection. We then do two additional ones, a diagonal finger breadth apart, creating a V-shape of injections. So the next one is going to be aligned here at 10 o'clock. And the third occipitalis injection will be on the medial side, a finger breadth apart from our first, also at a 45 degree angle at 2 o'clock. We're going to repeat that now on the opposite side, so we find the inion, the most prominent bony point in the midline of the skull posteriorly, the mastoid tip, we draw a line across, find the knuckle ridge, Make sure we're injecting above the ridge at a 45 degree angle. And then we complete the V-shaped set of injections, 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Five unit dose at each of the sites. Now for the cervical paraspinal muscles, it's important to inject just suboccipally, just below the knuckle ridge, with the patient's head in the neutral position. So we find the occipital protuberance, my fingers resting along the base of the protuberance. We measure down two finger breadths, find the spinous process at that point. We come just off the midline and angle it up, not too deep, 45 degrees. And then a diagonal finger breadth up and out at 2 o'clock on this side. On the opposite side, we repeat the same process, 45 degree angle, not inserting the needle deeply, angling upwards for another 5 unit dose. From this point, 
we're going to angle up diagonally and this is at uh, 10 o'clock on this side. So we do four cervical paraspinal injections. These are in a suboccipital area. We do not inject in the mid or lower portions of the neck. Injections in this region can produce neck weakness. Dobby, can you take off your t-shirt? Now when we do the trapezius muscles, we're going to be injecting the supracavicular portion of the trap. This is the part that is pinchable on the upper section here, and it lies between the acromial joint, the clavicle comes across, the spine of the scapula comes up, and we have an acromioclavicular joint, where you can get your finger into here. This is our lateral margin. Our medial margin is the inflection point, where the cervical portion of the trap starts to swing horizontally. So we find that inflection point, the acromial joint, and we split the difference between thumb and index finger in half. So this is our midpoint here, and we inject very superficially here to try and spare the muscle from any atrophy. So five unit dose midway between the acromion and the inflection point. Now we're going to split the difference in half between these two points for our next injection and we're going to split it in half going back to the inflection point for our next injection and all of these are kept very superficial and far away from the deep cervical muscles. I'm going to repeat this process on the opposite side. Find the, the joint, find the inflection point, the midpoint, keeping the needle close to the horizontal as we do that injection and then equidistant with an equidistant spread. Our final injection is going to be this last trapezius injection. The total dose for the trapezius is three injections on each side, each of five units. So that would add up to 15 units on each side. Our total dosing for all the sites you've just seen, 31 sites, five units of each site, 155 units and this will be done again in 12 weeks time.